Hey guys, it's Russell back with DieselGiant.com. On today's video, I'm talking to beginners and we're going to talk about multimeters and how to use them. You know, if you want to do any type of automotive work or troubleshooting, you need to be able to work one of these, a multimeter. If you've never used one of these before, if you've never even seen one before, they can be kind of intimidating. They have a lot of settings on them, they have digital readouts, they got some probes that come with it, but I want you to learn how to use this because they're not hard at all, they're very easy. And this basically is going to be a beginner's overview of how to use a multimeter to troubleshoot items that are on your car, your car's electrical system. So stay tuned next as I show you how to use this multimeter. Okay guys, this is a typical standard multimeter. This one is a uh, Sears Craftsman unit. It's, uh, the model number is 82025. I've had this for about 25 years. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but it doesn't matter. You can find these at pretty much any automotive supply store, um, like Advance Auto Parts, Pep Boys. You can buy them online. What I want you to do is I want you to get a good basic multimeter like this. It doesn't have to be fancy. These, I believe, are under about $30. Um, and this is, this is basically all you need to troubleshoot most electrical, common electrical problems that you're going to have on your car. I want to go over this just real basic and just try to give you a little explanation about what these different settings mean. Right here is what you're going to use on most of your automotive. That stands for volts DC, which is direct current. Now AC is what you have in your house. In a nutshell, the difference in the current is direct current moves in one direction. The electricity usually flows from negative to positive. Now on AC that you have in your house, it's called alternating current and it moves, the electricity flows backward, back and forth really, really fast. That's all you need to know about that. Just know that the volts DC is what we're going to use on troubleshooting a lot of our electrical on our cars. Now you see these got different scales, all right? And usually when you turn, it's basically moving the decibel point for you. All right, if you get into the higher voltages. So what I usually use on a car is 20 because you're not going to get pretty much anything over 20 volts on anything. It's a 12 volt system, so it's will give you a good readout. So I usually use 20. Your scale is probably gonna, it may look a little different, but try to get close to 20. We could use 200. Um, that would work also, but this way it'll give us like 12.25 volts instead of, let's say, 12.2 or 3 volts. So it just gives us a little bit finer uh, gradient to work with. Now right here, you see it says ohm, and it's got that little symbol, it's uh, like an upside down horseshoe. We're also going to use that for automotive work to test resistance. Now all resistance is, it means what kind of resistance to the flow of electricity. If you've got electrical going through something that has no resistance, which there's always going to be some resistance, but the more narrow the gauge of wire, the harder it is to push the electricity through it. So that's how come you see battery cables, they could be huge, okay? And you would think that those would have more resistance, but it's actually opposite. It's easier for the electricity to, to go through, such as your starting cables, um, a battery cable that's really big, as opposed to one that's really small. And I'm going to show you what these what these mean as far as with your uh, with your car so we'll not worry ourselves so much with the uh, the scale but as I said before volts DC and ohms this is what we're pretty much going to be concerned about today as far as doing some checks on your car now your leads you're usually probably going to have a what's generally considered this is the positive lead and this is the negative now don't be worried if you hook something up backwards if you're testing voltage because it'll just read with a minus sign. It's not going to hurt your multimeter at all. What I do want you to be concerned with is I would like for you to make sure that anytime you're testing voltage, 
All right, you never put it on the ohms because that could blow the fuse. When we're testing ohms, the meter has a battery inside here that gives a little bit of electrical current so that we can test resistance. If we, let's say, have this to, to uh, ohms and touch our battery, it could blow the fuse inside the multimeter, and we don't want to do that. When we're testing volts, we're testing something we're basically measuring electricity. Here we're measuring the resistance. This we're measuring the actual electrical power. There is another thing that you can use this multimeter for, as I said before, where it says volts AC. And that's what you would use to test, let's say, a plug in your house current. Please be very, 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 very careful when you plug these in, and I'm going to show you how to do that, but when you plug these into a socket, um, make sure that you don't have any breaks in the wire, make sure this is not cracked, this is insulating you from the electricity, and if one of these uh, wires or something had a break in it and you were to touch your hand to it under the right conditions, you could get a really nasty shock, and you don't want to get shocked from 120 volts, it hurts. Um, so I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to show you how to test the most common thing, automotive, and the simplest thing that you probably first use your multimeter is to test your car battery with. Okay guys, we're going to test a car battery. Now this is a normal 12 volt car battery that can be found in any type of passenger car. As I told you before, we're going to be checking volts, and I have my gauge set on to 20. So here's how we do this. You find which of your terminals is positive and which of them negative. Normally, you'll probably have a red battery cable or some type of indication, but please look on your battery. It'll have a plus symbol, and where your negative terminal is, it'll have a minus symbol. So, oftentimes, the cables will be red on positive, but not always, and don't go by that. Go by what it says on the battery. So, we know that this sides are positive. We know that this side is our negative, so we're just going to touch the terminals, just like that, and read the results. This says 13.15 volts. Now you're probably asking yourself, why does this say 13 and not 12? Well, if you're reading a battery and it reads 12 volts, it's basically dead. Batteries, depending on the temperature, the air temperature, how... Um, cold it is, the battery will probably, a fully charged battery is about 12.6 or 12.7 volts. I've had this battery sitting on a battery charger because it's been sitting here in the shop for a while and I didn't want any type of uh, degradation since it wasn't running, so it's just come off the charger. Now what I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you the scale, we're going to switch it to the 200, okay, and see what happens when you touch that. It still says 13.1, all right? But as I said before, try to get close to around 20 if your multimeter has that, so it'll give you, give it to you in hundreds. So right there, 13.4. Now, as I said before, what happens if you accidentally get the leads mixed up? All right, I've got the negative lead for the meter here. I've got the positive lead. I'm gonna to touch the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative. You notice it still says eh, about 13.10 volts, but you see the minus sign? It just means it's backwards. It's not going to hurt the meter at all. Okay? And we just go back and do it like this. Okay. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to touch the ohms when it's on ohms to this. It would probably blow the fuse in this multimeter. Okay? So that's the first test, your battery test. Now, if you were to run your engine, it's going to read a lot higher. It may read about 14.5. That's because the alternator would be charging the battery as the engine's running. So if you want to test your alternator, just have the uh, engine running and touch, same thing, touch the terminals to the battery terminals, and you're going to see what kind of voltage your alternator's putting out. If your vehicle's running and you don't see any additional voltage, then that means your alternator is not charging. And you know what? I can tell you this, but actually I want to show you this on a different vehicle. All right, hopefully the wind is not going to be too bad while I'm out here. Um, so let's test this battery that's outside. 
and we see we get 12.39 volts. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and we'll show the difference in the voltage when it's running. All right, with the vehicle running, you see it now says 14 point, about 14.2 volts. So we can see the difference in when the vehicle is off and it's on. So this is a good test if you're not sure if your alternator is charging. Um, if you're trying to track down a, a problem, it's something that anybody can do. This alternator is putting out basically 14.4 volts right now, so it is in uh, proper working condition. I just realized that I had a battery here that will not start the car, and I wanted to show you what the voltage is. All right, see this battery is reading 11.91 volts. You would think because it's near 12 volts that it's good, but this battery is completely um, at the end of its life. It will not start the car and it won't hold a charge. One other quick test that I wanted to show you about checking batteries, it's not just related to automotive. You can check any type of battery that you have around the house. Um, this is a, a C cell and this is supposed to be 1.5 volts. So of course it's got positive and negative so we're just going to hold the leads like so and we're going to see what we read. Alright we're getting 1.52 volts so if you've got 9 volt batteries, AA, AAA, it doesn't matter. Um, just make sure to set this to volts DC. Okay, and speaking of house current, I promised I would show you real quick how to test for uh, current in your house. Again, you're going to put this to uh, volts AC, and my scale has 200 or 750, and we know this is going to be 110 or 120, so I'm going to turn it to 200, and I'm going to take both of my probes <coughs> and put them in just... Okay, it reads 118.4 volts. All right, so that's normal house current. Again, um, since this channel is automotive related, uh, don't go around sticking these in your in your current. Okay, in your in your house, it's just dangerous. All right, so now I want to show you how to check resistance. Okay, now I promised you we're going to check and show you how to do resistance. Now again. I've set my <clears throat> scale on the ohms to approximately 200, all right? So basically, if, if you see your display like this, it's just got a one, or it may, be, it may have a little symbol on it. That means it would be the same thing as if there was a short, okay? Or you can say the circuit is open. Now, if I touch the two wires together, what it's doing, this meter is sending a small amount of electrical energy through the meter and it's reading the resistance of the probes and the wire. Alright, so you can see it says 0.4. That's 0.4 ohms of resistance. Now there, anytime you have something that electrical energy is going through, you're going to have some resistance. It could be so minute your meter couldn't pick it up, but we do know this is standard for this, for this meter. Uh, your meter may read something a little different, but 0.5 or 0.4 ohms uh, of resistance between these two wires. Now again, if you're testing something, like if I te I'm testing this plug and it reads this, then that means there's a short or there's an open. The, the, could be the wire is broken. So if we wanted to test this glow plug, I'm going to put one of my leads. This is where the power would go in right here. The power wire would connect here. And then I'm going to check the other end of the plug itself. All right, and we're getting, and the reason it's bouncing around is because I may not have a good connection, or I may not have it on there real good, but it's reading about one point, if I can hold it still, about 1.5 ohms of resistance. Now, remember, the reason that this can glow 
This is a glow plug. The reason that this can glow and get hot is because there is resistance between here and here. Okay? So, um, if I ask you to test your glow plugs on your diesel engine, uh, that's one way to do it. You could also test between here where it's grounded and here, and you get about, I can hold it steady. about 0.9 ohms. You really shouldn't, if this is the power that's going in here and this is the ground, there should really not be any connection. There's a little bit just because um, of the way I'm, I can't, it's hard to hold it still, but if you wanted to test the element itself, well let's just see, now let's say the element was broken inside. If it was broken inside, this is what I would get. You would see that it was open, okay? And again, the element itself is it's about, it's about one and a half to 1.2 ohms, which is fine. So you can go around and test things in your house. Um, just make sure, all right, I don't want to test the battery. This has got energy. As soon as I put the probes on either side here, uh, it very well could blow this fuse out. Remember, when it's in the ohms, setting your testing resistance okay so um, that's basically what you're going to use for automotive you can test uh, bulbs you can test wires you can test from one one end of the wire to the other if it shows open like this that means the wire has a break in it if you see that the wire has uh, see there's no break it's showing about point that's bouncing around about point four okay so we know that there is a path that goes from here into the meter and here. The path is not broken. If it's open, you're touching both ends, it's like that, then that means that the wire is damaged or something is damaged between this end of the probe and <clears throat> whatever else you're testing on this end of the probe. So the bottom line of this video um, is not to be to show advanced testing techniques. It's to get people that have never used a multimeter or in and they're scared of it to go out get your multimeter and this will allow you to do basic testing like I've already shown you so again um, if you'd like to try to get this model I haven't even checked on Sears to see if it's um, if it's even available anymore Sears does sell several different multimeters again you can look and see what I've got on here this is not the only multimeter I have but this is the one that I this is my workhorse it's the one I use all the time and I do testing on glow plugs, I test batteries, alternators, just like I showed you to do on this video. So I want you guys to be able to uh, get you a multimeter, utilize it, and not be afraid of doing it. I hope this video has helped those that were intimidated by using a multimeter. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos that you would like for me to do, just leave a comment in the section below or send me an email Contact me on dieselgiant.com and I'll do my best to accommodate you. I hope everyone has a great and safe day.